thing I, I always feel ignorant about, I must say, or, or find difficult, is um, what's called the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics in explaining the world. I never quite know why that should be the case. Can I, somebody help me? Sure, yeah. So uh, the phrase, by the way, was coined by uh, uh, Nobel laureate uh, Eugene Wigner, the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics in the physical sciences. So w w what is meant by this unreasonable effectiveness? So. Uh, let me give you just a couple of very quick examples. So there was this astronomer, Johannes Kepler, and he made observations 400 years ago, and they were not very accurate. They were accurate for his time, but not very accurate. They were about accurate to within about 4%. Yet from those relatively scanty observations, Sir Isaac Newton managed to write a mathematical law of gravity that already by the 1950s was shown to be accurate to better than one part in a million. In fact, in an experiment done in 2008, they showed that the law, inverse square law of Newton, holds down to a distance of 56 microns. One micron is one millionth of a meter. These are distances that Newton could have had no idea his mathematical law should hold true. What is it that gives mathematics such powers? We have a theory of everything that's electric and magnetic. It's called quantum electrodynamics. In this theory, it's a very highly mathematical theory. You know, electrons that move in atoms, they, they are like little magnets. You can use this theory to calculate the strength of these magnets. We can calculate the strength to parts per trillion. You calculate this magnet to parts per trillion. In 2006, this magnetic strength of the electron was measured to parts per trillion. And the two results agreed to within eight parts per trillion. So the question is, indeed, uh, how come mathematics is as powerful as it is? In particular, there is this thing which I sometimes call the passive effectiveness, which is mathematicians sit down, you know, people like Marvin and like Gregory here, they sit down, and they develop branches of mathematics sometimes with absolutely no application whatsoever in mind. <laughs> and yet, sometimes decades, sometimes centuries later, those very precise branches of mathematics are found to be exactly what is needed to theory. You know, this was the case with Einstein's general relativity. This was the case with group theory, uh, you know, and so on. So, uh, so these things exactly provide this. How come? Why is mathematics as powerful as that? Well, well I think I have one uh, funny answer to that, which is that uh, let's think what would happen if it weren't, if the world didn't obey simple principles. And the answer is, it, um, do you think the world exists? People argue a lot of religions are based on the idea that, well, here's the world. Somebody must have made it. So of course. Then you have to ask the question, not just how does the world work, but uh, how did the creator work? But the real problem is that the word existence doesn't make any sense. It's all right to say this table exists, because that means this table is in the universe. It doesn't make any sense to say the universe exists. So my argument is, one, this is just a possible universe. And now let's consider all the possible universes and suppose you had a universe in which energy weren't conserved. Uh, then all of a sudden things would blow up and there wouldn't, DNA wouldn't last a billion years at room temperature. And so if you take all of the things that physicists say, look at this amazing mathematical thing, it's accurate to one part in 10 to the 16th, then you say, well, what would happen if it weren't? And if you look carefully, you'd see that, well, then everything would explode or everything would disappear. And in fact, the current theory is that once in a while, some little thing, in fact, does explode, and that's a big bang. Yeah. So in other words, maybe you don't have to answer this question, because the answer is obvious. In worlds where there are no laws, there is no DNA and no philosophers to discuss it. 